guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com and today is the day we are going to tackle Rise by Extreme, which is, um, thank God for Nuna Bencord. I swear, I've been a fan of Nuna Bencord since I was a kid. Um, he scared the hell out of me uh, when I was a kid and I just fell in love with his playing. I named one of my dogs after him. Even to this day, uh, since I play golf a lot, every single golf ball that I hit has his name written on it. So I, I take it with me wherever I go, pretty much. Uh, I, I love this guy's playing, and um, it's amazing that he has now come back and dropped a hand grenade into the YouTube guitar community with the solo that is in this song, which is uh, just, just mind-blowing and nearly impossible to play. So. We're gonna try it though. I'm gonna break it down for you. As you guys probably saw at the beginning of the video, it's not an easy thing to do, but I'll give you some tips of how to how to tackle it, and hopefully we'll be uh, you'll be good to go with it uh, within a few months. Um, now, but we're gonna do the whole song, not just the solo. So I'm gonna start here with the actual solo after I do my little spiel because I worked really hard on get this solo down, so I shouldn't be at least be able to sell my Guitar Academy to you. So if you enjoy my videos here on YouTube, especially this one, took a lot of work to get this song done, please join my Guitar Academy. You'll see a link to it in the description below. Uh, that link will give you a free seven day trial and my Guitar Academy contains all my courses for complete courses for beginners to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training theory, guitar tone, you name it. So please come and hang out. And I, oh, I do hang out with Academy members every single Saturday, live streams, and you get individualized support from me as well. So please come check it out. All right, so first things first, we are tuned to drop D. So just take a standard tune guitar, but take the low E string. <laughs> it down to D and you are, you are ready to rock. So this one does rock. It's got a lot of killer riffs in it. Uh, Nuno is just, he's got these killer fills throughout the song, which he always does in most of Extreme's music. By the way, if you guys don't know Extreme's music, like this is the first time you really see anything by Nuno Bacorn, Porno Graffiti album, my, it's my, my personal, like when I, when Van Halen 1 was released, I was a baby, all right? So um, it didn't have a huge impact on me as a baby, <laughs> but what did was porno graffiti. So personally for me, that's my Van Halen one. That is the greatest guitar riff slash solo album of, I think, of, of my generation. For like songwriting, it was based around songs. I got a whole band playing. Uh, I guess instrumental albums that really had a real big effect on me per non-instrumental albums, probably this one's the peak. Um, the one that actually like a band oriented album is Porno Graffiti. Three Sides of the Edward Story is awesome too. They get a lot of awesome stuff. So it's Nuno. Hopefully you guys will check out the rest of the work. All right, so let's start here with this opening riff. We have this. All right, so he's gonna start off uh, taking it easy on us for a little bit. So we're gonna start here with this, um, uh, the third fret across the, uh, I'm gonna call it the, well, we'll see if I can get away with calling it the low D string, because I'm usually bad about that kind of thing. But, um, so that low D string now, have our one string power chords going across the third fret, pull off to the open strings on those strings. So it's an open there. Then he mutes the strings and a couple of down strings. So it's kind of that repeated. So the fourth time through, you're gonna do that pull off from three to zero, but then you're gonna play back on the uh, three and hammer on the sixth fret across those strings. So we have this. And then we basically do the same thing again. Except we're gonna hammer it onto the fifth fret instead of the sixth. So we have this. And the third time through, back to the sixth. And then the fourth time through is we have a little fill. So that's kind of just takes us to the verse. That little fill is just three, zero, three, five on the low E string. And then into a bend at the fifth fret there with a pinch on mono. You gotta hit that fifth fret a couple times. The second time you hit those 
Spin it up. So this. All right, now the uh, verse comes in. So each verse has got the same riff pretty much, but different fills. So we have to take a look at each verse uh, independently. So this first verse looks like this. All right, so um, that's gonna be the same riff that we did in the intro. And then we have this first fill. So it's mostly single notes on the low D string. Yeah, I got it right. So we have this. So it's three, zero, three, five, Three zero on the low e, low D. Yeah, I almost messed it up. Like that. And then he's gonna go three five, but at the end, but he's gonna make him full power chords by playing the the third fret on the low E. All right, I'm gonna call it the low E now. Cross uh, the low E and the the A, and then the fifth fret. All right, so it's basically this. So those two chords at the very end. And then we start the, the riff again and we have a different fill. All right, so <clears throat> that fill, same riff leading into it. So I'm going three, five on the, on the low E. Um, Paul muted, over to the third fret on the A. And then three, five again, to the fifth fret on the A string. So and then, and it's kind of a slight bend on the four on the low E, and then down to three. All right, so that's the end of the verse one, and then we get to this pre-chorus, uh, most simple part of the whole song. All right, so that's really heavily palm muted. The, the power chord here at the third fret, and then to the open, so three zero, and then zero twice. So with this. Then do it again. And then you're gonna end it playing three, five power chords there, just on the bottom two strings. We have this. So you're gonna basically repeat all of that three times. And then you're gonna end it with just a hit on the low, just the open strings. So it's like all right, and then we get to the chorus, uh, which looks really cool. So chorus actually has a couple of guitars on it, and we have a guitar that's kind of changing chords underneath it, uh, power chords, which we'll talk about that. So if you have a second guitar, so you're going to do it. Otherwise, just playing the kind of D riff that uh, Nuno is doing is probably going to be the way to go, because the bass player can do the harmony changes. So we basically have this. So um, it's gonna start with this quick little hammer on. Open, six string open, 
then hammer three and hammer five. It's gonna lead in into the chorus there. So that happens all the way into the last chorus. It doesn't happen before the last chorus after the breakdown, but before each chorus, it leads in with that. And then we have this. So he's doing this here instead of. The reason why he's doing it down here is because he's keeping this D ringing. Still hear that D, D ring kind of filling up the sound. Um, so we basically have. Uh, so hitting the open D and play that the six right there on the A, slide down to five. Then the open D again, hammer three to five, and then pick that five. So, so you wanna keep that D ring. So the eighth time through it does this. And that's gonna be a quick little, uh, ham uh, play the sixth fret across the low D and the A. Slide down to five. And then, really heavily palm muted, um, the open, three, five, three. So, uh, Now, there's chords that go with this, so if you have a second guitarist, now these chords work and while keeping this D ring, because a D happens in each one of these chords. So first thing first is just a D, D power chord. So you can hit the open, you know, just a D power chord, just, you don't have to play that note on the high E string. Just play the third fret there on the B, second on the G, and then the bottom three strings open. Then it goes to a B flat chord. So D is the third of that chord, so that still works to have that note underneath it. So that's the uh, power chord off the first fret of the A string. And then to a G chord. And you can really just kind of pull this off since we're in a drop tuning here. You can do stuff like that, but it's probably just the best way. It's just a high E string and the B string held at the third fret and then the open G and the D. And then... the course like that so you can just kind of match the other guitarist with that little riff right there all right uh, then we get back to the main riff played once and there's another fill on it so this <laughs> so that little fill is a so you're gonna kind of heavily palm it in, sliding into the fifth fret of the a string over to the uh, fifth fret on the D, and then back to that fifth fret, I'm sorry, the seventh fret on the D. Then back to that fifth fret on the A. Then jump over here to the fifth fret on the G, to the seventh fret on the D, roll over to the seventh fret on the G, then back to that seventh fret on the D. So you know everything's going around this D, this uh, seventh fret on the D. Then you're gonna end it back here at this, fifth fret on the G, and when you hit this note, you're gonna flick the string. Uh, you kind of flick the open string, just like that. Walk the string, basically. And then, and you kind of just do this quick bar dip, and then slow go, uh, go down with it. So this. So it's slightly, a slight dip in it before you do the pull off to the open string. All right.
right? And then it goes back to the second verse. So it has the same riff, different fills. So let me play through this uh, second verse for you. All right, so uh, this right here, so it's the same riff in this first fill that happens. So we're gonna do it, it starts with a trill, it starts with the open G. Kind of trill between uh, the five and the open G. And then take it down to the fourth fret. And then, and that's a quick little open B, hammer on one, pull back off to the open B. With this. And then just gonna do straight pull off from there. Pull off two to zero on the G, three to zero on the D, three to zero on the A. And this gets down to the third fret to kind of start that again. Now this next fill is really fast, and Nuno's style, his fills especially, he comes in with these huge, heavily palm muted uh, riffs that he does in the middle of a fill. He throws these all throughout the riffs, and it's just a signature of it. it's heavily palm muted. Sounds sounds like somebody's rolling a boulder down the hallway. It then that's kind of his, it's like a trademark of his, and he gets this by really heavily palm muting, and believe it or not really lightly picking. So if you really dig in with the pick, sounds horrible. But if you really kind of lightly, lightly pick the string with a heavily palm, it sounds huge. So what he's doing here, so it's gonna be zero, three, five on the D, then a zero, three. Over to five on the A string, then the open D again. Then down to the third fret on the uh, A string. So you want to practice that much. Of And then, then, and it's a quick little ending. Five, zero on the open string, then the third fret. Then over to the fifth fret on the low E string, that twice, and down to the third fret. So you put those together. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so that, that verse is challenging. It's got two kind of really challenging riffs in it. Um, and then we have a pre-chorus again, but this one's a little bit different. He throws a kind of a unison bend in there. Now, you're gonna see him play just like a lot of points in this video. The, um, there's no video at the, as of this filming of him actually playing this thing live. Uh, but I'm pretty sure on, on the actual recording, the, the bend is happening down here. Makes sense, because it makes the riff playable. Uh, and there's really no other place that you could realistically do this bend. So in the video, he's jumping up here and look like he's doing the bend up here, but um, there's really nowhere to play it up there. So anyway, here's the pre-course with that bend in it. All right, so like I said, Let's pay attention to how it's probably actually played. Not new to the showman in the video, which he's going to play some things. He's going to throw some some wool over your eyes, but uh, it's down here is where the bend's going to happen. So uh, we're going to go. So it's the same riff, except now we have this in there. So it's, it's the uh, first fret there on the B, and you're going to hold the third fret there on the G, and then 
And obviously you're gonna bend the note up on the G string to create a unison bend. Then you gotta come back and catch the second half of the riff. And then you kind of repeat that. This one doesn't end with just a, a hit on the open note. It goes 3-0 to end it. So it's a little bit different from the first pre-chorus. Besides that, the ending is 3-0. All right, uh, and then we get to the same chorus. So nothing new to learn there for the second chorus. Uh, but then we get to the bridge before the guitar solo. So the bridge looks like this. All right, so this jumps around pretty quick too. Um, we're gonna start with this, kind of hits on the low, the, just the, the bottom two strings open. And then the octave is gonna be up at the 12th fret here um, on the A and the 14th there on the G. So octave, basically the 12th fret off the A string octave. If you're playing this song, you probably know what that is. And then it's gonna slide it down to 10, so this. And then, one, two, three, and then. That's then gonna be a slide from 10, the octave from the 10th fret, down to seven, and then up to eight, we've got a couple times. Show you this. So one more time. Actually, it kinda, kinda hits it almost like four times there. But that last one's kind of delayed. Then we basically do the same thing, except we're going to work our way up uh, with the chords. So you hit the third fret here twice at the, the, the power chord and the same octaves. But here, when you come back to the, the third fret, you don't just jump right on it. You go. So I hit, started with the open first. So with this. See that? So it starts first with the, this is the third fret, then the open fourth. So it makes it easier to get back to the chord anyway. And then he does the same thing at the fifth fret with that that third time, the second time through, leading it with the open. So with this. And then we're up here at the power chord of the eighth fret. Same octave, and then, then once again, that open leading in to the seventh fret. And the same ending. So the whole bridge. All right, now we're at the solo. So I know we did the solo at the beginning of the song to show you. I'm gonna show you guys again, just to kind of a little refresher, and then I'll show you how to play that thing if you're brave enough. So here we go.
So that is just uh, an amazing solo. Um, so let's start with that intro here, which is kind of a tribute to Eddie Van Halen. A lot of the stuff at the very beginning is a tribute to him. And then when it gets to the really intense picking part, that's pure Nuno. Um, and then that ending arpeggio section, um, it's gonna be very deceiving. Um, he, it's actually a technique that he's used quite a bit in, in his repertoire. He's a, his hammer-ons are just absolutely sick. And he, when he mutes those, he's real big at muting them and making them sound very percussive. So it sounds like every note's like picked, but it's not. A, a, and, but so he, you can hear them through his, his repertoire for a lot of his solos that he'll do this kind of stuff all the time. So go back and listen to Porno Graffiti and, um, and Three Sides of Every Story if you really wanna hear him do this quite a bit. So uh, let's start here though at the beginning. This. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna start here um, with a just kind of tremolo thing. And you basically tremolo picking that fifth fret there on the high E. And you just kind of keep this going. And you just start doing, kind of do some pull offs, three, a five, three, zero. And then he stops on the third fret a few times through, and then up to five, and then up to the eight. So, so one of those things is kind of like, you no, know, you know, it's kind of like you gotta just be able to hear it and just match. And then it. So what he's doing here, he's, he's really just picking on it. Picking on the high E string. But he's gonna do kind of a hammer from, so you're kind of picking that um, eighth fret there. And he's gonna start doing that little, changes it up by playing seven, hammer on eight, pull off to seven, pull off to five, and then a hammer on from nowhere at the fourth, at the eighth fret there on the B string. Kind of trim a little pick back up, five, seven, eight. So in doing do with that again. So it's so that note on the B string is kind of hammered on. It's not picked. So the third time through though, he doesn't go over to that note. He does. He does. Kind of goes down to the fourth, slides down to the fourth fret, and then comes back up to the fifth. So if I slow it down. And then he does it two more times, but a little bit quicker without less, less terminal pick on the end. By just doing that, going back over to the eighth fret there on the B string with a hammer on. So we have this all together. So it's kind of, it's one of those things where, you know, showing you note for note, like, hit this 17 times, and then, just, that, these little parts, when they're kind of, it's like terminal picking with little kind of flurries in between it, eh, a lot of it's kind of just like, just kind of match what you hear. And then it kind of comes up here, and size up to the, the uh, 13th fret there, same thing. Same lit. Over to that hammer on the, so it goes kind of going to 12, 10 on the high E, over to 13 on the B. And then the, he kind of does this, this lick again on the high on the high E string. So it's, without going back down to the B string. And then come up here to the 15th. And he, and he barely gets this one started. Never goes to the B string. And then. And up to this 22nd fret. And then hit the low string, which is a D now, a low D string. And do a bar dive on that. So you're gonna kinda wanna keep that bar dive there for this next section, which is. Uh, 
All right, so that is, so you already got the, the bar uh, dive going from that low D dive. So you're there already. Now mute that D string in, hit pick the G, and let it come back up. So it, open G, and then there's kind of the same thing for the second fret, then five, then seven, and then 10. And then a few bar dives on that, so. All right, then it goes into a bend at the 12th fret, and when he does this bend, he grabs both the high E and the B together. So when you just, sometimes that happens when you do a bend, you get the B string in there and it sounds cool. But as he comes back down, he's gonna have the, uh, just that note just played by itself, the on high E string with vibrato without the B string in it. And then, so that right there is a bend at the 13th fret, a whole step bend. And then what you're gonna do is try to bring it down to the half step and release that half step. So, and then you're gonna pick the 12th fret behind it and raise it back up that half step to get back to, to that note. So, this. So, Kind of a weird little lick. And then, so that's that little lick that goes right before the solo, or right before the fast part of the solo. So that's uh, the um, tenth fret on the high E string played twice. And then you're gonna pull off 14 to 10, and then 13 to 10 you can do it with your pinky, like that. I kind of keep like doing my pinky. So over the 14th fret, um, the 13th fret down with the B, pull off the 10, and then and then come over to the 10th fret there on the G and bend it up. All right, now it gets serious. This is where it starts sounding like Nuno, and he's very, very rhythmic style, very aggressive picking style. Now when I say aggressive, it sounds aggressive, but the key to this is some slight palm muting and a very light pick attack, which makes those notes really pop out and makes you kind of glide across the strings a lot. So a lot easier. So this first little lick, I'm gonna break it down. So we have, if I slow, play it through it slowly. So now that we're gonna play that about 300 times faster. So uh, when we get to this, now we, we launch into it. So that's gonna be 13 on the B string over to 10 on the high E string. So the slightly palmy. Over to 10 there on the B and then back down to the 13. 13, 12, 10 on the uh, G string, and then back to the 12, 13, 12, 10, then 12, 10 on the D string. Then, then come back to the G string, a slight bent, and then the, tw the tenth fret there with some vibrato. All right, so that really kind of is what launches the second half of the solo. And then the next phrase we have this is this. I'm sorry. So that is it sounds like it sounds like because it's so fast, like he's playing the same thing twice, but he's not. What he does first is he plays 13, 10 on the G, and then. 12, 10 on the D. And then, it sounds like he's going this. Like that, but what he's really doing is this. 
He comes over and grabs a note on the A string just to make it even harder. So, so we have this first four notes. And then it's going to be 12, 10 on the G, over to 12 on the A, and then 10 on the D. So it's not, it's that little ending. And then, there's a quick little, sounds like this time it's not a bend, it's more of like a slide to nothing. So you kind of, I mean, the guy's got so much feel, um, and he just locks into these grooves that are like just crazy, and he just has insane licks around it. So after that little slide, come back to that tenth fret on the on the uh, G. So so far we have this. Now this last one is the the one that's tougher. It's longer and it's got a lot of kind of string crossing, but it looks like this. All right, so now the, the key to this is there's a couple of hammer-ons are gonna happen in there. They're kind of slightly palm muted and his hammer-ons are so clean and so precise that it almost sounds like the notes are picked. And that's how he gets away with this really aggressive lick like this. Um, so we're gonna start here with this. Um, 12, 10 on the D, over to 10 on the G, and then play 13, 10 on the G, and then 12, 10 on the D. And then play 12, 10 on the G, over to 12 on the D, and then jump up and grab the 10 on the B string. So it's kind of the re reverse of what we did uh, uh, on the previous leg. So we have this. Now here, he's gonna do a couple of pull-offs, a few pull-offs to kind of give us a little bit of a break. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna pick those notes. Sounds like he pulls them off. So he's gonna pick the 13th fret, pull off to 10, and then pick 12 and pull off to 10, and then uh, pick 11 and pull off to 10. So, and then come over to the 13th fret, 13, 12, 13. Now here, and he throws in this little, So it's a quick string crossing, and you'll see him do this technique a lot, where he'll pick the top note, and then he'll hammer on the lower notes. You see this at the beginning of the um, uh, the first fast lick and the get the funk out solo, uh, and, and stuff like that, where he'll, he'll hit the, the note that the index finger is playing. So, and then the rest, he'll, instead of string crossing with the pick, he just, hammers that note. So he has a 10th fret there on the B, hammer on 13, and then back to an upstroke on the B. So he's doing these with the upstroke. He usually does those top notes with upstrokes. Like that. So we have this. Okay, and then from there that sets us up to go. So he does 13, 10 on the B, then 13, 12 on the G. You're gonna pick that uh, 13, that 12th fret twice, because he wants to get back to this, that pattern, he needs it to be a start with a downstroke, so he plays that note twice. Plus it fits with the groove. So, that 12 twice, and then 10 on the G, and then 12, 10 on the D. And then he's gonna go up and grab the 10th fret on the G string and then hammer on thir uh, 12 and 13 on the high E. I'm sorry, on the G. Then you're gonna roll over and grab that 10th fret there on the B and then come back down and grab the 10th fret there on the G. So it is. So it is. Uh... So when we get here, we get back to that. Where he's picking the top note and hammering on the lower notes. 
with the slight palm muting, it really makes them kind of sound even. All right, so what he's doing here, after he gets... When he gets to this 10th fret on the G, you're gonna pick that note, hammer on the 12th fret of the D, then pick that 12th fret on the uh, this 10th fret on the G again, and then hammer on the 12th fret of the A. So this palm muting is what's making this work. And then back to that, picking that note on the G string, the 10th fret, and then hammer on that 12th fret on the D again. Now when you, when you get back to that 12 on the D, when you play that note, pull off, you can release the palm muting, pull off to the 10th fret, and then over, hammer on to the, um, so pull off the 10 and then hammer on that 12th fret there on the A. And he ends that that section, which is pinch harmonic in the 10th fret on the uh, D, and then to the 12th fret on the D. All right, and then we have this. Now, well aware in the video, he plays that lick here, but that would be very awkward in drop D tuning. Um, so I'm pretty confident when he recorded this, he's playing this down here. Um, so with this, I didn't come up here and grab the end of it there, but it doesn't sound like the, the first part of that is here. So you will see him play this lick here. Like I said, it's, it's, it's very awkward that way. So, so instead, kind of slide into the fifth fret of the A string, over to the third fret there on the D, over to the fifth fret on the A. And then five on the D, back to the five on the A, and back to that third fret there on the D. And then come up here to the eighth fret there on the A. And that, that eighth fret there, a couple bends on the tenth fret there, and then play ten eight. And you slide that down, and then we get to the arpeggio section. So this arpeggio section is very tricky. It's one of these things where it's a, it's a pattern. Um, so in, in one way, it's actually a little bit easier to get up to speed than this like really rapid picking thing. It's kind of easier to make this sound like the recording than it is uh, up here. So we first need to get the pattern down and then move the notes around, move, move the, the, get, change the frets, but the, obviously the pattern is the important thing. There's a couple of things that I think about when I'm playing this to get it up to speed the, that helps. First of all, the muting. You're gonna have to heavily palm mute. And in addition to that, because there's really, when you're, you can't do any muting with this hand. So you really have to um, heavily palm mute, maybe a little bit further up from the bridge than you usually would which makes the strings sound even more dead, which adds that percussiveness and helps keep the strings, because here, there's still some resonance. So you're gonna get a lot of noise while you're doing that. Um, so when I'm doing it, I'm also kind of muting these top two strings and just kind of holding them with these two fingers. And then I'm mute, moving the, my palm is muting the strings back here, but not right on the bridge, a little bit further up to create even a bigger mute. All right, now, what the pattern is is, He's not picking all these notes. He's only picking the notes that happen on an open string. And everything else is hammer-on. And it's all gonna be played with the, all the hammer-ons are gonna be played with your index finger and your pinky. All right, so we're basically gonna, the pattern is just gonna be like this. Now, I'm not gonna show you the pattern where it starts. Because that's actually harder to hear because there's a lot of unison notes in there. I'm gonna start it here with the second pattern that he plays so you can actually hear the notes change and it's easier to kind of pick up with the, the pattern that's going on. But then I'll break it down slowly. But slowly. All right, so what is going on with that? Um, now, uh, I'll give you a little tips when we start getting this up to speed, but we're gonna start here. Like I said, I'm gonna do the pattern here, seven and 10. So every single, you're gonna be hammering on the, the D, A, and obviously the low D string here. Um, heavily palm muted. And what you're gonna do is, uh, those would be the only frets that you play. So we're gonna start here with the, 
you're gonna pick the open, the low string open, the low D. And you're gonna hammer on seven, 10. Then you're gonna go over and pick the A string. And then hammer on seven on the A, but instead of hammering on seven on the 10 on the A, it's back on the low E again. So he doesn't do the whole pattern up onto this, the A string yet. So that last note is still over here on the low E or the low D, like that. So. Another thing too is, is this is a, it's 16th note. So it's, it, and it's, that's kind of weird when you're playing like a group of three in the, in the, with the hand and it's, but it's in a timing of 16th note. So I'll show you some ways that uh, you can get around that. But anyway, so we're first gonna start, get the pattern in. Then after you've done that far, then it gets a little bit easier. You're just gonna do that same open seven, 10, um, twice on the open A, on the A string. All right, and then we're gonna come over to the D string. So that's gonna be the note, the string that you pick for a while now. So you're gonna still pick the open D, but still do the hammer on, on the seven and 10 on the A. So, so we have this. Now here we go to the D string, but the hammers are still on seven and 10. And then we start working our way up to the D string with the fretted notes by picking the D string again, but now playing the seventh fret only on the D string and coming back and playing the 10th fret there on the A. So we're kind of climbing up like we did here. So. All right, and now we're gonna go to the, uh, this, point right here is what I call like the halfway point of the lick. That's how I kind of divide it in my brain because I, I noticed when I was practicing it and trying to get up to speed that the lick would, the, the pattern would kind of break down because it's just like a, uh, just a cacophony of, of notes really. And I had to figure out a place in it that I could like have a like, kind of a placeholder. Like I, I learned this much. Of And I treat that as the ascending part of the riff. And then it starts the descending part of the riff, which is. And I separate those two. So I only have to think of one at a time. And that made all the difference to me. It really helped me kind of get this thing up to speed and, and without breaking down halfway through the riff. So when we get to that top, so we pick the D and we worked our way up to the, just the D string with all the notes on the D. You're gonna start with the open D again and hammer seven to 10 on the D. And then we're gonna work our way back down by going open D, hammer seven, but the 10th the fret is hammered on the A. So we're kind of reversing what we did before. Then the open D again, and the, both hammers on the A. So. And then we work over to the, once we do the, all the hammers on the A, then we'll start the picking. We'll move off the D string on the picking and move it to the A string. And we're gonna play. As soon as we get those two notes hammered on the A, we're gonna pick the A string, hammer, we're still working our way down though, so we're gonna pick the A, hammer seven on that A, but move the, the ten's gonna land on the low E string, or the D. And then the last one is kind of the toughest one is we're gonna play the open A and then just the seventh fret there on the, uh, the seventh fret on the, um, just, you're just gonna hammer that and that's gonna stop it. So since it's kind of a, you're playing a, a, you need it to match up and do like patterns of four, so it needs, one of the notes is gonna to have to just be two instead of three. So we basically have, oh, sorry. Now, 
the hardest part of the riff for me, when you, to know where the hardest part is, you have to try to get it up to speed. And it's that very ending and starting over because you don't have any time, much time to recover with your index finger since you gotta go. You gotta get to the next, to start the pattern over since you don't have the, the pinky coming down in between it. You basically have the open string, hammer with the index, and then the open that starts the next. And so you basically have a one note to jump to the next fret. And so when you get to up to full speed, it's probably gonna be the hardest thing. So I, I recommend breaking it down into two sections like that, an ascending section. And then a descending. And uh, really kind of focus, kind of focusing on that recovery really fast Got to cover really fast with that pinky just when you're starting over the, the pattern. Now, you can practice this on one string just to get the shape. To... See that little. I'm kind of just the last one's going to be a two. And then. Then this is a problem thing of moving it across the string in the patterns, but you can work on the in the timing of the whole lick. Like that. Starting over. So that's another tip. Don't try to do that when you're trying to get the timing of the whole thing. Do it on one string and then take it across to that pattern. All right, so now that we know the pattern, now we just gotta figure out what frets everything's at. So it actually starts with a big stretch here, so still do that muting. I'm muting everything as much as I can. So I'm doing it at the seven and 10 on each string, seven and 12 on three. So it's the same pattern. And then where we played it when we were learning it at seven and 10 on each string. And then at five and nine on each string. And then at eight and 12 on each string. All right, so when you put those together, So it kind of does that twice. Now the second time through, so you start getting to the end of the first time through, he adds what I believe is like an arpeggiator effect to it. So he's not doing those notes. That's an effect that's adding this, that stuff that's going off. So it's kind of matching him rhythmically what he's doing, but if you slow this down, it's the notes are just kind of going all over the place. So it's pretty much like an arpeggiator effect is what I think that's going on. Uh, but the part is basically that pattern played twice through. So after you get to the eight up here, you just go back and just kind of go through the whole. So basically, go through the same sequence twice with those same frets: seven to twelve, seven and ten, five and nine, eight and twelve. Now the, during the second time through, the last. You don't get to get finish the pattern completely. When you kind of get down and that pinky hits the A string coming back down, he kind of jumps up and grabs this little uh, oblique bin. Or as dime bag affectionately called them, hick bins. So that's a, the uh, 13th fret there on the B and the 12th fret on the G. And you're gonna bend up that note on the G string. 
All right, and that's the end of the proper solo. And then there's um, kind of a a breakdown section, almost like this. All right, so that's kind of similar to the chorus riff. It's a little bit more uh, percussive. So, so hitting the low D and then slide from six to five on the A, then the open D, then three on the A, and then five a couple times on the on the A. So it's kind of like Paul muted some of them. So you kind of do that like three times. And the fourth time through is a little different. So it just goes three, five, three at the end. So hitting the D, the low D in the same spot. So this. And then we do the riff a couple more times. Kind of the same way as before. And then at that, after that, second time. This is a lot of pinch harmonics. You can just hold the same note. Kind of do some pinch harmonics down the H. I know he's up here and all that stuff, but it's, it's kind of, you can just play the same note that you're playing at the end of that riff. And then it gets down um, to the outro chorus. So this outro chorus, um, it's got this kind of everything. Uh, that same. And, and the same chords under it. But they add now like this octave thing over it. So let me play through the octave. So this is like kind of, it's a really cool section. You can kind of get away with it. You can probably play like, have this low D. I don't know if they've recorded that way, but since they have that low D. If you only have a couple of guitars, maybe you, maybe you can kind of do that, uh, add the low D in it. But anyway, so the, the octaves are this. Something like that, uh, yeah, like the ending of the uh, chorus. All right. So those octaves now they're all based off the A string octave. I'm just gonna call out the fret that the index finger is at each time, so it's the same octave shape. So seven, I'm uh, sorry, nine to eight to ten. Up to the 12th row, then 15 and 13, and then the 14, and then back to 10. So you might want to write those notes down, those at least the frets, uh, so you'll you know because it's one of the things until you get the melody in your ear, it might be hard to memorize. So with this nine. Starts over, but it's a little bit different. This next sound through there's nine, twelve, eight, and then ten. That same twelve, ten, nine, pretty much the same mini, pretty close until you get to that thirteen. 
From there, you're not going to go to 14. It's going to go down, down to 10, and then that play that end, uh, that riff that's kind of in the middle of, of the end uh, was the end of the the chorus riff, the middle and the end. Uh, you play that real quick, and then it gets back to this little ending main riff, which is. Um, they, they play it kind of standard like they did earlier, and then the drummer goes into like kind of a halftime feel. Um, and then there's a little guitar fill that happens there too. So it sounds like this. All right, so it's uh, basically the same riff, and there's, there's a little fill that happens. So very uh, kind of a uh, quick little lick on that. So heavily palmated, open, D, then the third fret, fifth fret. Then the same thing on the eighth. So that's the beginning of And then, so that's when you release the palmy, and you come up and just do a lot of pinch harmonics on these notes. Five, three on the D, then three, five on the A, and then three, four on the low E. So with this. And then back to the riff. And it just ends the song there. Three zero, then three five. All right, so that thing is a monster. That solo is just insane. But it's lucky for us. It's a it's a really good song too. So it would not be as interesting if it was in the middle of a song that completely sucked. But it's a very cool song, and then the solo is just out of this world. And I, I'm so glad that Nuno's back. I can't wait to hear the new album, and I hope you guys will listen to it too. All right, I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.